scratchy. Right. But that's all right. Oh, the Lord's so good. Amen. All the time. All the time. He's Mercy. good. Hallelujah. His mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Go beyond my carnal mind. Yes. Amen. Amen. I don't understand why He puts up with me, but I'm glad He does. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. And I don't question it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to get Him thinking about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm satisfied with Him putting up with me. Amen. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Praise the Lord. We're talking about reaping and sowing. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And last week we began this in Genesis the 26th chapter. Yeah. And we find Isaac. And every time I said Isaac in last week's sermon, Brother Isaac, we would listen to it at home to edit it and put it up on. Every time I'd say Isaac, he'd look at me and say, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> so the Isaac of Bible times. <laughs> hallelujah. Not Isaac Willis. Find him in a time of famine. Yeah. Drought, a time of hardship. Amen. Right. Famine and drought's not a pleasant thing to go through. Come on. Amen. At least as far as where you're going to get your next meal, a lot of times Amen. they just did not know. <clears throat> and Isaac here, he's thinking about maybe going down to Egypt, and we know that because the Lord tells him, "Don't go down to Egypt." And we know the Lord knows the thoughts and intents of the heart, so he knew that Isaac might decide to go somewhere else. And the Lord says, you stay where I want you. Amen. Plant seed where I've got you. I know it's not going to make any sense to the carnal mind, yeah. but plant seed. See, we talked about reaping a harvest during the time of famine. And how do we reap during the time of famine? We sow during the time of famine. We found that Isaac, regardless of what he thought, of what his, his uh, servants thought, or what his neighbors thought, in a time of drought, Brother Sleece, in a time of famine, in a time whenever he probably couldn't grow weeds, he goes out there and plants a crop. And the Bible says because he was obedient to the Word of God, because he did what God said and stayed where he was at, in the land of famine, the land of Gerar, we find out he didn't starve to death. We found out he didn't die a horrible death. We found out that God's Word was the same in Genesis all the way through His Word. It's the same today because it never changes and it never passes away. Amen. We found out that God will not be mocked. Yes. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So Isaac obeys the Word of God. He plants seed during the time of famine in the land of famine and he reaps a harvest thereof. And we learn that if we're ever going to sow, if we're ever going to reap a harvest in the middle of famine, in the middle of hardship, in the middle of hard times, yeah. amen, we talked about hard times last week, in the middle of all of that, we're going to have to plant some seed. Come on. We're going to have to decide, even though times are tight, my billfold ain't going to be. Right. Amen. Come on. We're going to have to decide that even though it don't seem like this is the time to give, to the carnal mind. And what like Brother Slee said after the sermon was over last week, it make no sense. Don't make no sense to plant seed during the time of famine. There's no rain. The earth is hard. It doesn't make sense sometimes to plant seed in the season that you're in. Yeah. You're in a season where everything's tight and you don't know where you're going to be able to pay your bills or not. Yeah. Yet if you'll obey God's Word, <clears throat> if you'll not be weary in well-doing, right. amen, right. if you will not faint, you will reap in due season. Amen. Amen. If we'll plant the seed regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the trial, regardless of the season that we are in, if we will not allow our planting of the seed to depend upon any of that, if we'll just plant in obedience to God's Word, we are promised, Brother Sleep, that we will reap that which we sow. Yes, sir. That's His Word. Amen. You count on that. Right. Amen. Sister Amy may tell me something today that she's going to do tomorrow. She may not do it. Yeah. I may tell you something today that I'm going to do tomorrow. I may not do it. Come on. Things happen. Right. Situations. Plans change. Amen. But God don't. Right. His Word don't. Amen. You cannot outgive God. Yes. You Come cannot on. plant seed 
according to the Word of God and not reap a harvest. It is a spiritual law in God. Amen. Amen. Come on. That which you sow, you will reap. Yes, sir. You know, in God. Come on. You have never, listen to me, you have never ever given anything to God that you didn't get back a hundredfold. Right. Amen. You have never. Oh, you might. I went. I've done some things. We went and bought a bunch of flowers one time. We planted them, and I watched them die. <laughs> Amen. I prayed over them. They still died. <laughs> Amen. But I guarantee you, anything you've ever planted yeah. in obedience to God's word. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Now I'm not telling you. Listen. You may plant your seed in some places, and you don't like the results you get. But if you plant them where God yeah. tells you to plant it, amen, in the land of Gerar, in the place where God had commanded Isaac to stay, yeah. if you plant your seed there, you will reap the benefits thereof. Right. I said this one time, I'll say it here. We were in Greenville, Kentucky. This has been, oh my goodness, 12 years ago, maybe something like that. I was preaching a revival. And I said, whenever you give to God, you should expect something in return. And there was an older gentleman about three seats back and said, no, 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 the Bible says give, expecting nothing in return. No, that ain't what the Bible says. The Bible says lend. He ain't talking about God. Lend. That means if you lend to your brother, you're supposed to expect nothing in return. Amen? If you lend, expect nothing. But if you give to God, expect. Why? Because His Word says. So you can count on His Word. When I plant seed... Where God tells me to plant seed, I expect something because God has promised me I'll get something. That's not the reason we give, amen? Come on. Many times we give just simply like Isaac did out of obedience, but at the same time, Isaac it did expect a crop to grow or he wasn't wasting his time doing it. Right. I don't go out to a place and break it up in my backyard and plant some tomatoes and things just and, and expect it not to grow. I'm expecting something. I'm expecting a harvest from the seed. When I plant seed into God's kingdom, I'm expecting a harvest. Why? Because He said, I will not be mocked. Uh, be not deceived, son. Uh, whatsoever you sow it, there will you also reap. Uh, it is a spiritual law in God. Uh, all the way back to the beginning. Amen. You, When you give, you will get the Jesus said give and it shall be given. Amen. Not just given, but pressed down, shaken together. Shall men give unto your bosom and be running over. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. And what else Jesus say? It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Don't tell me Jesus didn't believe in giving. Amen. What about it? What about the little widow woman with the mites? As she dropped them into the offering plate and he turns to the rich boys and says, this woman has given more than all of the rest of them because she gave out of her necessity. She gave out of her, out of, out of her, it was, it was a sacrificial gift that she gave. Exactly. Probably didn't make no sense for that woman to give. If all she had to do was mice, she probably had too much Come on. to give. Come on, but she gave you. anyway. Amen. We let things that's going on around us decide whether we give to God or not. All right. And that's wrong. Yes, sir. That's wrong. Because regardless of what's going on, God's word is still the same. Amen. If we plant, we will reap. Yes, sir. In due season, we will reap Absolutely. that which we have sown. That's exactly what happened to Isaac. He stayed where he was at. He stayed where the Lord wanted him and he planted seed. Yeah. Amen. I know you're out there listening to me by radio. I know you're out there watching us on the videos and you're listening to us on tape or CD and you're thinking you can't afford to give. Our message to you today is that you cannot afford not to give. Amen. Yes, sir. You cannot afford, church, to shut up your bowels of compassion. You cannot afford, church, to shut up your giving and to close your purse strings to God. Amen. Amen. True. You cannot afford to. Yeah. My goodness. You can reap in the time of famine if you sow in the time Absolutely. of famine. Amen. Amen. You cannot afford not to plant your... Isaac could not afford not to plant seed. He could not afford not to be obedient to the Word of God because his family's existence depended on this. Right. His very existence, Brother Sleece, depended on him obeying God's Word, 
Planting the seed where God wanted him to plant it and reaping the harvest that would come from that seed. Yeah. Now the season didn't look right. It's in the middle of a drought. The place didn't look right because it was the land of famine. Right. But because it was obedience to the Word of God. Amen. Absolutely. Because it was obedience to the Word of God. Whether you believe in tithing or whether you don't. Yeah. Giving is still in obedience to the Word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. Giving is still in, the, in obedience to the Word of God. Mm. Planting seed has always been a spiritual law in God that you reap what you sow. Always has been. Always will be. Yes, sir. And it, it may not look like the time you're supposed to. It may not look like the place you're supposed to. I wish you'd write down and get this in your crawl today. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yeah. Amen. Wow. It says that if you sow to the flesh, yeah. you will reap corruption. Yeah. That's what it teaches us. Amen. Amen. If you sow to the Spirit, shall, the, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. And then it says, and oh, I love this, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Yes. Amen. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we do not stop giving, we will reap that which we sow. If we don't just throw up our hands and say, well, forget it. I've tried. It ain't working. Yeah. Things just keep getting worse. Shut up! Just keep obeying God's Word! Right. He is obligated! He cannot lie! Oh! Hallelujah! Yeah. He cannot lie, Brother David! Amen! Yeah. I can't, it may not look like it's going to happen today, but bless God, if I hold on to His Word, it's going to happen because He cannot lie! He cannot fail! He is God! Amen! We learned that David... Who had lived a long time. He had seen wars. He had seen famine. He had seen pestilence. He had seen natural natural disasters. Yeah. Yet he had never seen the righteous forsaken. Oh, the righteous forsaken are God's seed. Begging for bread. Hallelujah. Oh. Sure. If you talk to the old king, and you say, King, I bet you've seen some rough times, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You was probably back. You was probably here back during the big famine. Everybody talks about, yeah, yeah. I saw it. It was, it was bad. I saw famine. You was probably here during that war. Yeah, I saw. I saw war. Probably ain't nothing you ain't never seen. It. You know, have you ever heard that? Somebody said that about an older person. You've been around so many years. You've probably seen it all, ain't you? They probably walked up to the king. Oh, brother Dave, can I see out this morning? They probably walked up to King David, brother Sleece. They probably said. You've probably seen it all, ain't you, old king? Oh, yeah, I've seen everything but this. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. Hallelujah. Ain't never seen that, Brother Lee. Oh, my Lord and my God. I think the older I get, the crazier I get. Hell, I said, I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. I've seen it. I've seen a lot of it. But I ain't seen it all. Come on. During the time of famine, God's seed still survived. During the time of pestilence, God's seed still survived. During the time of war, God's seed still survived. I've seen a lot of things. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging bread. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I wish we'd get a hold of this this morning. I wish we'd get a hold of this this morning. Amen. My, my, my. You're out there and you're thinking, Preacher, yeah. I love it. Amen. And as soon as I can afford to, you still ain't got it. Oh, wow. Amen. Oh. You still ain't got it. You still wait until you can afford to give. That ain't the way it works. Amen. That ain't the way it works. Yeah. If you want to reap during the time of famine, right. you're going to have to sow yeah. during the time of famine. Oh. Amen. You're going to have to be obedient to the Word of God. Yeah. You can't wait till the big check comes in. You can't oh. wait till the new job starts. You can't wait until something big happens and you get blessed till it's overflowing. Amen. i got news for you. If you won't give now when there's little, more likely you ain't going to give when there's much. That's it, brother. You hear what I said? Yes, sir. I've seen it. Amen. I've been in the ministry for 26 years. I have seen people who had nothing, very little, yeah. yet wouldn't give anything. They were waiting until they got something. Yeah. Well, guess what? They got something they still didn't give. 
Do you hear what I said? Amen. If you won't give when you got little, brothers, please, I doubt very seriously you're going to give when you got much. Absolutely. Amen. Oh, my Lord. Praise God. My, 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 my. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, church, there's a lot of things you can sow. Yes, sir. We're going to talk about that more next week than we are today, but there's a lot of things you can sow. That's it, brother. Not just monetary value. That, that is a big part of it. Come on. Amen. Because man puts so much stock in money. Yeah. That's why the Bible even points this out. You cannot serve God and mammon. You know what mammon is? The almighty dollar. Amen. Come on. Oh, greed. Greed gets a lot of people. That's why Jesus said easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because of greed. Yeah. It doesn't mean a rich man can't get there. It just means it's hard. Yeah. Because the riches of this world, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Yeah. But you can you sow a lot of things. Right. We, we talked about last week, and like I said, I ain't going to hit on this much because this is what we're going to talk about next week. You can sow mercy. Because the Bible says the merciful shall obtain mercy. Mm -hmm. I went up Wednesday morning to Sister Mary's church. They had church on Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. And I went up there to Greenville for service Wednesday morning. And Sister Lynn preached. And she preached pretty much what I'm preaching right now. You reap what you sow. She's talking about being a magnet. That you can be magnetic and pull things to you. Yeah. Or you can be, you know, the other way, how it forces things apart. When you turn that magnet around or whatever you put it to try to put to, to another magnet or whatever. Yeah, repels. Yeah, repels, repels it. Repels each other. Repels each other. Yeah. Wow. No matter how much you push toward it, it just keeps getting further away. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's the way it is when you don't obey God's Word. That's it. Amen. But when you obey God's Word, you will reap that which you sow. Amen. Amen. Guaranteed. Hallelujah. Guaranteed. So we're talking about reaping. Oh, I know. You can sow mercy. Yes. You can sow forgiveness. Exactly. Brother Billy, what are you talking about? Well, tune in next week and we'll tell you what I'm talking about. You can sow righteousness. All right. You can sow evil. Yes, sir. That's right. All right. You can sow sin. Come on. And we're going to talk. If you want to know what's wrong with America, tune in next week. Come on. If you want to know why we have the shootings we have, the disasters we have, the droughts that we have, the, 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 the things that the turmoil and the trouble of the trial. Don't miss next week. Amen. I got the answer for you. You can quit scratching your head and wondering why. Amen. You reap what you sow. Good or bad. Right. Doesn't have to be God's judgment. Right. All he has to do is let you plant the seed. Yeah. Amen. Because in his spiritual law, it will come up. Oh, my Lord. But today we're talking about reaping during the time of famine. Sowing during the time of famine. Oh, I like this. Listen to this. Ecclesiastes 11 and 4. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. It means if you're waiting for the right time, you ain't going to reap anything because you ain't going to sow nothing. Did you hear that? If you wait for the circumstances yeah. to be right. Brother Slice, if you wait for just the right situation, then you're going to give. You ain't going to, sow, you ain't going to reap nothing because you haven't sold. Amen. You're depending upon your circumstances to change. Whenever you know, what it, you know what it might take to change your circumstances this morning? What, what it might take to change your circumstances this morning is for you to think outside the box. Yeah. For you to decide, I know this don't look like the time to give, oh. but I'm going to give anyway. I know this don't seem ordinary. You see, when Brother Slice, when we start doing things that are not ordinary, then we might see God start doing things that makes us scratch our head and say, hmm, that ain't ordinary. Oh, Amen? It wasn't normal for Isaac to, to have a crop of that size uh, in the land of famine. Yeah. And it wasn't ordinary for him to plant the seed either. Yeah. Right. See, when he got out of the ordinary, God began to do some strange things. Oh, my, my, my. When you start doing some things that don't make sense, it don't seem like the time for me to give, Sister Cindy. Right. This don't seem like the time for me to forgive. Uh-oh. Right. Catch that while it's going by. Right. This don't seem like the time for me to have mercy. This don't seem like the time for me to have compassion. Come on. Tell it. Oh, this is going to get good before we're done. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Go with me to 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. And y'all probably know where I'm going already and you think you already know everything that's in it. But if you do, please have patience for all of us ignorant folk who might learn something new today. Hallelujah. We find another famine has gripped the land and we find somebody else with their back to the wall. Amen? Oh, you talk about a timely message. Well, the Lord knows, don't He? Amen. He had us started on this before I heard this week about the food prices. Amen? Right. My, my, my. Whew. Never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. I've listened to Chuck Bates with News and Views this this today uh, this week as I was driving down the road and he was talking about some of this and I was thinking, well, actually I don't think it's him. I think he might have a guest speaker this week. Anyway, somebody on Chuck Bates' show talking and I was thinking, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I was thinking how that God is God and He changes not. In Him there's neither shadow of turning. Amen. I was thinking how God is always ahead of people. How He's always sustained His people. How He's always those that will obey His Word and stand on His truth and hold to His unchanging hand. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. I was thinking how in the wilderness uh, He can make a river to flow out of a rock uh, and feed a nation of people so they don't starve to death. I was thinking how He can cause manna to rain down out of heaven. I was thinking how He can feed Elijah by the brook Cherith out of the mouths of a raven. I'm telling you God will take care of His people and if you do not faint, if you Continue to sow, you will reap in due season. Amen. My Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. Listen to me. First Kings, are you there? The yeah. 17th chapter. Yeah. Beginning of the seventh verse. We're going to pick it up there. The Lord has sent Elijah up to the brook Cherith to drink from the brook, and he was sending him food by the mouths of the ravens in the middle of a drought. But listen to what happens. And after it came to pass, after a while, it came to pass after a while, that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now if you look up that word commanded in the Hebrew, it means that God had set things in order. He had got everything exactly the way they needed to be for whenever Elijah arrived at the fence. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Amen? Oh, it. it wasn't so much that he had spoke to that woman, I'm sending a prophet, he's come and give him bread. No, he had commanded, he had set things in order. Yeah. He had set things in place. Right. God's still doing that today. Amen. He's still setting things in place. True. Amen? He's still setting things in place for you to be blessed yes, sir. if you obey His Word. Mm -hmm. yes. if, you'll, if you'll obey His Word, yes. you'll see Him work through people Amen. that you never thought would give you a dime. Right. That you wouldn't thought Sister Cindy would give you the time of day. Oh, my son, come on, my God. Wouldn't give you the time of day. Come on. Preaching. Can I, can I talk, son? Can I say something about Mama Fitchers this morning? Yeah, we went to Sister Judy's church, what was it, 16 years ago? Something like that, 96, 97. Yeah. And Mama Fitchers and Scott and Cindy and Brother Dave, they'd all come in, you know. I didn't think Mama Fitchers liked me. And she might not have at first. I have no idea. I never asked her. Didn't want to know. <laughs> oh, but by the time Mama Fitchers went home, she blessed this preacher more than I'll ever be able to put into words. <laughs> Amen. And you couldn't have said that woman's going to be a blessing to you because I didn't think that woman liked me. But she would call me. She'd send me a check in the mail, $10 every month. Yeah. And she'd call me. And she'd say, Brother Billy, I want you to pray. Yeah. I want you to pray for Scott. I want you to pray for Cindy. I want you to pray for David. Mm -hmm. And she would speak encouraging things to me. And oh, I wish I'd have had a chance to let her know just how much before she left this old world, how much of encouragement she was to me. But sometimes God will use people. Right. You didn't think they liked you. Man. I've seen it more than once. You didn't think they'd give you time of day. Come on. Man. And he worked through them people because he set things, he sets things in order. Right. He sets people in place. Amen. Right. We're not here at this church. We haven't been here for six years for nothing and in vain. Amen. Right. We didn't just happen one day to open up this storefront church. God ordained this. On, you ain't just here this morning because you decided God ordained this. Right. You think you decided, but God gave you a push in the right direction. Right. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. So we find this prophet 
up there by the brook Cherith, and the brook dries up. I got to hurry. The brook dries up. Yeah. And the birds ain't quit bringing anything to eat. Right. And the word of the Lord comes to him. The Bible says in verse 8, the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, get to Zarephath, and belong to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman yeah. there to sustain thee. I've set things in order. I've got her right to the right place. You know why? Because her back's against the wall. She's scraping the bottom of the barrel. Right. She's desperate. Come on. Sometimes we got to get desperate, Brother Sleep. Oh, my Lord. Sometimes we got to get desperate before we obey God's Word. Exactly. We tried it like the woman against your blood. She tried all the doctors. She tried everybody else. She spent all her money. Yeah. She's desperate enough now to crawl to Jesus. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we got to get desperate enough to crawl to Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. Sometimes we got to get desperate enough to lower our pride and crawl to Jesus and say, God, I can't. God, I ain't got nobody else. Yes, right. <laughs> My Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I got this, I got this thing worked out, Elijah. You get up and you go. So what's the Bible say he does? Now here comes the obedience. Yeah. Verse 10. He arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold the widow woman. Yeah. Was see it doesn't even say a widow woman. It's the widow woman. The one that God had come had set everything in place for her to be there. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't coincidence, Brother Sleece, that she was there at the same time when Elijah arrived at the gate. When he came up to the gate there, it wasn't coincidence that there she was. Well, she just happens to be out here. No, 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 no. God had ordained it. He had set things in order. Amen. He had set things in order. He had gotten it all ready. Here's Elijah at the fence. Here's the woman picking up sticks. And listen to what happens. Oh, my Lord. The widow woman gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. Now remember, they're in the middle of a drought. That I may drink. Yeah. And as she was going to fetch it, you know, she thought, well, I might as well spare him a little bit of water. Mm. I'm fixing to die today, you know, after today anyway. Yeah. Ain't going to take long for me to finish off. Might as well share a little bit of water, God. Mm. So she went to fetch it for him. And he called to her, this is as she was going, and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread oh, in thine hand. Right. He might as well have asked for a bag of gold. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He might as well ask for a bag of gold. Matter of fact, gold was probably more precious than bread was. Yeah. Amen. Oh, bread was probably more valuable oh. than the gold. Could you bring me just a morsel? Yeah. Just a morsel of bread. Oh, listen what she said. And she said, As the Lord God, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. Yeah. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Right. Well, you're talking about famine. Yeah. You're talking about having your back against the wall. Amen. You're talking about not looking like the time to give. Yeah. Can you imagine if the neighbors was out and they knew the old lady's about to starve to death? What's she doing? That man's asking her for something to eat. Let's see what she does. I, I don't almost guarantee you she's going to say no because I know she ain't got nothing in that meal barrel except just a little. She's going to make some flitter bread today and then that's going to be all she wrote. Her and her son's going to die. They're starving to death already. There ain't no way that a woman's going to give him thing to eat. But let's see what happens. Yeah. Amen. Oh, you're talking about famine. You're talking about being desperate. You're talking about a time that doesn't seem like this is the season to give anything. This doesn't seem like it's the time for me to help anybody. It doesn't seem like it's a time for me to give anything. Amen? Oh, my Lord. Most of the time, it don't make sense to obey God's Word. Did you hear what I said? Most of the time, it does not make sense to obey God's Word because our carnal mind can't figure it out. It doesn't make sense to the carnal mind. The spirit man knows that what's going on, but the carnal mind is see that the spirit's willing to face his weak. The flesh is saying, you're crazy. Don't you give him the last bread you got. Don't you give, you don't know who this man is. Don't give him anything. There ain't no way. you got to have what you've got. Y'all going to have to try to even, even to eat that, and you're going to starve death. Don't give it to him. Has your flesh ever told you don't give an offering? Has your flesh ever told you to hang on to that hand instead of giving it to hard times? Right. <laughs> True. Amen. All the time. Your flesh don't want to get rid of it. That's it, bro. Your flesh don't want to give it up. Come on. Your flesh don't want to give you tithe. Say it. Your flesh don't want to give the offering. Your spirit man does. That's why that's wrestling going on in there. I know yeah. I need to. 
but I can't. And your, your, your spirit's saying, I need to do it. Your flesh is saying, can't afford to do it. Yeah. Your spirit's saying, God's Word says to do it. Your flesh is saying, what well, God understands. Yeah. He understands. Amen. He understands you reap what you sow. Right. And you, you're making your own bed. Amen. You're planting your own garden. Oh, next week we're going to talk about planting your own garden. My, 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 my. Listen to this. Oh, I'll do it, preacher, as soon as I can afford to. You ain't getting it. I don't know if you're going to get it, if you still think it am. Elijah said unto her <clears throat> in verse 13, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, yeah. but make me thereof a little cake. After you've got y'all's and see if you have any left, make me a little cake first give to God first don't wait till you see you got anything left over before you give to God amen oh I knew it wasn't going to be too popular but it's truth anyway don't wait till you see what you got left over because you won't have none left over make it for me first listen fear not that's what God's telling you today fear not obey my word go and do as thou hast said make me thereof a little cake first bring it unto me and after, make for thee and thy son. Now she just told him. All she had was enough to make one cake. All she had enough was enough to make one thing. Yeah. So you see the faith it's going to take for her? She's going to make him what she thought was all they had. Amen? She didn't have but enough, just a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. She was going to make a cake. Her and her son going to eat it. Then they were going to die. He said, you make that cake you said he was going to make, then bring it to me. Right. Then you and your son make something for you. The flesh is saying, wait a minute. If you make something for Him, there ain't going to be nothing left for you and your son. Yeah. But the Spirit's getting ready to obey the Word. Yes, be not deceived. Yeah, God is not mocked. Yeah. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Elijah tells her, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord shall reign upon the earth. You're going to reap during the time of famine if you sow during the time of famine. Your flesh is saying don't do it. Your neighbor's saying don't do it. Your mind is saying don't do it. God is saying to you what He said in the book of Malachi in the third chapter of the tenth verse. Prove me now therefore saith the Lord of hosts. Prove me. Prove me. Prove me. See if I want to bring to pass my word in your life if you'll obey my word. Yes sir. Prove me. Exactly. Your flesh is saying no. Your neighbor's saying no. Well, God's saying, prove me. Yes, sir. Prove me. Prove See if I won't bless you. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive it. Well, See if I won't rebuke the devourer for your name, for your oh, sakes. Amen. Yeah. See if I want. See if I will not allow him. I will not allow him to destroy your fruits uh, yeah. of your ground. Yeah. Neither shall your vine cast forth her fruit it, it, before the time. Uh, amen. In the field, uh, saith the Lord, prove me, prove me, prove me, prove me. All the nations of the earth shall call you blessed uh, if you'll prove me, if you'll trust my word, uh, if you'll stand on it, if you'll obey it, uh, if you'll continue oh, to do what. I'm saying, prove me and see if I won't do what I said I will do. Amen. Prove me. Absolutely. Prove me and see if I won't. So she went, the Bible says in verse 15, and I'm closing. She went and did according to the saying. What she do? She obeyed the word of the Lord. She obeyed the word that the Lord spoke to her. Yeah. And guess what happened, folks? Her and her son starved to death. They died a horrible death and everybody laughed at God. No, 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 no. Everybody mocked God. No, 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 no. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. She went to the meal barrel. She scraped the bottom of it dry. She began to mix the meal and the oil. Hallelujah. And a little bit of water. And she made the man of God a cake. The cake that was supposed to be their last meal. Hallelujah. She took it to him, planted the seed. And she went She went back to the meal barrel. And guess what? She stuck her cup down in there and brought out a cup of meal. Hallelujah. Out of God still filling empty meal barrels today. If we'll obey His Word. If we'll stand on what His promise is said. If we'll do what He said. He will come through for His people. Hallelujah. Oh my Lord and my God. If we'll obey His Word. If we'll stand on God is 
it's not a man that he should lie. He will do what he said. He will do. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know what happened the next day? She went back to that meal barrel that was supposed to be empty two meals ago. And she took her cup and she brought out some more meal. You know what happened the next day? She went back to that old empty meal barrel. And the neighbors looked on and they said, ain't going to do her no good. I seen her scrape the last of it out yesterday. And she reached down there with the little cup and she brought it up with her feeble hands and blessed God there was meal running out of it. Hallelujah. Why? Because she obeyed God's word. And she gave during the time of famine. And she reaped during the time Yes, sir. A famine. Amen. Oh, y'all getting that? Yes, sir. Oh. Praise the Lord. God will not be mocked. Thank you, Jesus. Obey His word. Yes. Obey His word. Yes. Obey His word. Amen. Obey His word. Yes. Prove me. Prove me. Somebody say, prove me. Prove. Prove me. Now, could that little widow woman afford to give? She couldn't afford not to. That's right, bro. She was fixing to die. What happens? If she goes out that day and gathers her those sticks and the prophet says, give me a cake and the Lord will bless. What happens if she says, no, I can't do it. Her and her son starve to death. That's what's going to happen to you. Amen. You're fixing to starve to death spiritually if you quit giving to God. That's right. I ain't talking about earning God's grace. I'm not talking about earning God's forgiveness. I'm talking about planting and reaping. That's a spiritual law in God. All right. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Amen. Amen. True. Oh, how long have I been preaching? About 10 minutes? The Bible says, well, let's see what happened to him. We know she didn't starve death. So let's see if God surprises us with anything. Amen? Oh, my, 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 my. Praise the Lord. What happens? Her and her house and the prophet, what happens to them? They do eat until the famine's over. Amen? Yeah. She went and did according to the word of Elijah, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Well, there's a big surprise. God kept His word. Hmm. My, my, my. Scratch your head and say, well, that's surprising. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which He spake by Elijah. Now listen, she went from not having enough to feed her and her son to having enough to feed her, her son, and the prophet till the oh, rain came. Oh. Till the rain came. Right. If you ain't thinking no other way of giving to God, take care of the man of God. Right. Amen. Amen. If you ain't got I, if you ain't got two dimes to rub together, make him a cake. Not me, because I'm on diet. To find somebody that ain't. <laughs> Amen. Give the man of God something. See if God don't bless you. I'm reminded of Sister Hicks, not B.R. Hicks from Christ Gospel, but Sister Tommy Hicks's mama. Lived down on Richland Road. Used to grow a garden every year. She wouldn't let nobody touch it till Brother Hinton got in there and got him some stuff out. Uh -huh. And they said every year she had more than she could give away. Mm. Coincidence? I don't think so. She was not weary in well-doing. She did not faint. And she reaped what she sowed. Right. Right. Amen. Oh, God is not mocked. Amen. He'll do the same for you. Right. As he did this widow woman. Amen. Amen. Uh, given it shall be given. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. For the same measure ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 19 and 17. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given, will he pay him again. Meaning you give to the Lord. And the Lord will repay you. Right. Amen. You will reap what you sow. Yes, if I have time this morning to close with one scripture, I could read you. We could read situation and, 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 and example after example, but I want to close with this this morning. Matthew 6 and 24. Y'all have to excuse me for getting so excited. You think, preacher, you've been preaching since he's 19. You've been studying God's Word or reading God's Word since he's five or six years old. <laughs> And you still get excited about it? Oh yeah. Like nothing else this world has to offer. Amen. I still get excited, Bruce Lisa, about the Word of God. That's why it saddens me to see churches that have to have drama teams to draw the crowd. That have to have entertainment to draw the crowd. That have to have big presentations to draw the crowd. That's why, that's why it saddens me that people have to have that in order to be drawn. Right. 
It used to be God's Word was enough. It used to be, Brother Dave, that Jesus was enough. It used to be, Brother Sleece, that the cross and what He did there was enough. But now we feel we have to put on a, a three-ring circus to get the house. But we have to, if we can get a hundred people, I'll preach from the roof. Not this preacher. You'll come to hear God's Word and feast upon His Spirit or you won't come. I ain't going to dress up in no clown suit. I ain't going to dress up like no bird in a big nest like the guy in Little Girl. I ain't going to dress up like a vampire in a coffin like the guy at Central City. Yeah. What you see is what you get. An old time Pentecostal preacher that preaches the Word of God. Amen. And allows the Spirit of God to draw. And if you won't allow Him to draw you, that's between you and Him. That's right. Listen to what he says. <clears throat> I'm closing. Matthew 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters. Oh. For either he will hate the one and love the other, yeah. or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Right. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat, the body more than raiment? Listen to this. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, yeah. nor gather unto barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature. In other words, which of you by sitting around and we're in today can fix tomorrow? Right. We're in will do nothing but dig your grave a little bit deeper. Amen. Did you hear me? You can dig your own grave with weary. Right. Put yourself in a coffin with weary. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. True. Worrying about it won't do no good. That's right. It says. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Yeah. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Oh. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Oh. Therefore God is, if, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall He not much more clothe you? Right. O ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Yeah. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for it, the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Obey God's Word. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and He will take care of the rest. Make the decision today to obey God's Word. Regardless if the wind's blowing, regardless if the sun's scorching, regardless of what season you're in, give to God, it shall be given back. Plant seed, in due season you will reap what you have sown. Amen. Give the Lord a hand for the Word of God this morning.